live in San Salvador? I live in Sonsonate, San Julián. Oh, oh yeah. Do you live in Santa Ana, right? Yeah, yeah. So the night is so hot, I suppose. Yeah, he's so hot. <laughs> but some 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 people say that San Miguel is the worst. Yeah. It's actually Usulutan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be clear. Just no. If we're talking about cities, Oriental area. Yeah, the, the whole the whole western um yeah. area is, is is hot as hell. But yeah. if we're talking about the worst city to walk like at noon, it's Usulutan. Yeah. I have been in Chulton. basically yeah. all Chulton is the worst, yes. I have been <laughs> in basically all of the cities. The one that I visit the most is Usulutan because it is very close from my house. Um and oh. yeah, I have to say that the worst city or the, the hottest city in El Salvador that I have been to is Usulutan. Um the problem being, I think that there are not many houses. Like Usulutan is a very commercial downtown area. Yeah. Where it has a very commercial downtown area that causes a ton of traffic. And also it causes a lot of heat because um, yeah. there are not many houses around. Therefore, there are no plants. There are no trees. There are no nothing. Um, like a desert. Not yeah, forest. Also, not forest. And also because it is a very plain terrain. So there are no hills, there is no variation on the, on the terrain. So there is no wind either. So it's very, very hard oh to have God. wind. All the wind that they have, it is blocked by some of the buildings in, in the outside ring of the city. So yeah, Usulutan is very bad. San Miguel is not, I mean, it's not far from being the worst, but honestly, I mean, I'm not defending San Miguel. Like I am, I live in El Transit, El Transit is my city. So San Miguel, yeah, it's a different thing. But it is not really that hot because they have many trees. Like they have houses in the middle of like um, commercial buildings. So there is like at least a mango tree, um, maybe a papaya tree. So there is at least some vegetation in the middle. So it's not only buildings after buildings after buildings. Um, therefore, yeah, San Miguel is not like the top hottest um, department. But... Um, Sonsonate, it's probably hotter than Santana because, I mean, Sonsonate yeah. is closer to the beach. So yeah. probably yeah. that's the reason why. Yeah. Yeah, because from all the cities... Teacher, you, uh -huh. you are from San Miguel. Mm, yes, I mean, my town... But, 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 you, but you not sounds like a Migueleño. Oh, well, <laughs> that's because I have, <laughs> I have a costume myself, not to sound like one. <laughs> Yeah, if I if I were um a traditional San Miguelian, yeah, yeah it will be very yeah. hard for you for some for some of you guys to understand me. But um yeah, the thing is I I will I have to say that my favorite city in the whole El Salvador is Santa Ana. Like if we're talking about downtown or like capital, you know, of, of a department, Santa Ana will be my favorite because it has basically everything. Like there is a lot of parks there is a lot of like vegetation around and it is not hot like at all and it is not too crowded because the, the reason yeah. why i don't like san salvador is because it is very crowded and traffic yeah. is just horrible um yeah. i'm not i'm not hating okay i'm not a hater i'm just saying <laughs> um so yeah with my girlfriend we have talked about moving to to santa ana she's a lawyer and she likes the um the courthouse in santa ana the other yeah. day we went um to visit the, the cathedral and the central cathedral park is, yeah it's central basically park. Just, just in front of the of the um the jury or, yeah. the, or the courthouse and she was like this will be a good place to live <laughs> and i was i was i agreed because i know that there is a lot of work for me as well in in santa Ana. but yeah well it is nice to see you guys again it is nice to hear that you were practicing and talking about um how hot or how cold a city can be <laughs> In my case, uh, it was kind of funny because it started to, to rain. Just as soon as I clicked uh, and started the session, uh, it started to rain here. So hopefully it's not going to be that hot. I just came back from the gym. I was sweating a lot before I, I started or I joined. Um, but hopefully the rain is going to make it go away. All right. So for tonight, we have a lot to cover if we can. Hope, I mean, it is almost never possible. But, you know, that's what the world is for, for dreamers. 
Um, so we have a conversation we haven't practiced and it is titled, what can we do? This one has a lot to do with um, the problems and the situations that we have been talking about before. We also have a way in which we're going to be um, describing situations uh, with infinitive clauses and phrases and these are going to be used to completely describe what can we do or the possible solutions to a problem. Um, also, some intonation choices or some intonation that we're going to make uh, or establish a difference between either or other word. Um, and apart from that, the thing that is going to guide the question for the evening, and it's going to be, would you rather or would you prefer? So the question that I'm going to be asking you guys this evening is relatively simple. I just want to know, in the case of all of you, when you have to um, celebrate on a special occasion, it can be a birthday, um, it can be, I don't know, anniversary, any kind of a special occasion. And uh, your idea is to go ahead and have something to eat. Would you rather cook it yourself or go to a restaurant? What would you prefer? Would you prefer to cook it yourself, to make the meal yourself, because it is supposed to be special, or go to a restaurant? So I would like to hear your opinions on this question, and I'm going to start by asking some of the people that I don't ask regularly. I think this time around, we're going to hear starting from Joaquin. So tell me, Joaquin, if you had a special occasion, would you rather or would you prefer um, cook at home or go to a restaurant? Okay, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Um, I prefer uh, to go to a restaurant because I can cook it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Very nice reason. Yeah, I mean, we're going to take it. Yes. Okay, nice. Yeah. So you prefer to, do you have a favorite restaurant to go with your family? Yes, uh, I, I, we prefer, my family prefer uh, to go uh, Pizza Hut. <laughs> I was thinking of that. <laughs> Same for me. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yes. Any special location, people just go like, okay, go on la pizza. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. Great. Okay, now let's hear from Jacqueline. I almost never asked Jacqueline. Jacqueline, yo apenas voy entrando. Jacqueline, um, tell me, when you have an special location, Jacqueline, do you prefer or just your family prefer to cook at home or go to a restaurant? Uh, my family and no, we prefer the cook at home teacher. Uh, Tomorrow is my birthday. Oh, and happy birthday. So, happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> yes. Thank you. And we plan a uh, cook home. Happy birthday. No le cuente a nadie, pero entonces no entra hoy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Okay. teacher. laughs> So you prefer to cook at home. And do you have, yes. do you and your family have like a favorite meal? Like something you, you know, that is for sure something that all of you are going to like? Sorry, Algo que sea you... como su, su, su platillo favorito, o sea, de la familia así, completo, que sepan que seguro. I love the seafood. I love okay. it. And your yes. family too? Tienen que. Yes, okay. Tienen que. <laughs> ok. Saben que yo estaba pensando en eso. Yo sé que a veces, me van, a veces en la U me dicen eso. Usted siempre anda pensando en lo que uno va a decir. Y yo tipo, o sea, no sé por qué me pasa. Sí, o sea, me pasa. Estaba pensando en, en eso específicamente. Yes. En, la, en la comida, o sea, de... de uh, marico, uh, I love the seafood teacher. Okay. It's my favorite food. Yes. So hopefully they cook a mariscada for you tomorrow. Yes. I think I that hope. will be perfect. <laughs> I hope. Okay. Anoche en el grupo de las 9 de las 10 también alguien me dijo que tenía no sé qué sueño para su cumpleaños. Ah, que quería que le hicieran una fiesta sorpresa, era. Entonces yo le dije que me pasara el número de un familiar para mandarles a decir. Pues sí, sin pena yes. ahí, el número de un primo claro. o algo. ¿eh? Pasame el número, le dije yo. Y claro. Yo, y le dije, mira, soy, fam soy el profe de tal y ajá, quiere una fiesta sorpresa, rebúsquense. Pero no le digas que me dijo. Ya. Ajá, pues sí, pues sí. <risa> ok, good. Hopefully you're going to have a blast tomorrow. Um, if you guys, okay, aquí tenemos otra, otra, otra palabrita que no sé si ya se la conoce, se la podían, sí, have a blast. a blast, yes, 
have a blast. When we have a blast, it means that we have an excellent time, like a perfect uh, moment with, I mean, we enjoy the moment. So that is when we have a blast. Okay, um, for the case of uh, Eduardo, Eduardo Romero, when you have an special location with your family, do you prefer to cook at home or do you prefer to go to a restaurant? I prefer uh, uh, my home. Okay. And then I is okay. Delicious pupusas. Mm, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Okay. Yes, I mean, I, I was gonna ask, but now you already answered. And pupusas will be a proper way to celebrate any occasion. In my case, yeah. I mean. Yes, I, I have this dream. I, my father wasn't okay with it, but I have this dream that whenever I have the chance to celebrate something myself, like this is something I wanted for my graduation party. I wanted to give people pupusas. You know, that, that was like what I wanted. I, I mean, if it was my choice, what I was going to give to people, I wanted to give them pupusas. And I don't know why I still want that. Like if I, when I get married, I don't know why, but I want to have like a pupusa place there. And when whoever wants pupusas, <laughs> just go and ask for pupusas, you know, <laughs> like, yes, there's um, the other day, me and my sister, we were like planning and we were like trying to trying to find out who will be the pupuseras for my wedding. <laughs> so we're, we're going, we're planning to hire two pupuseras because, you know, we're going to give people the option of choosing from whom <laughs> they would rather to have pupusas. But yeah, I don't know why. It's like something weird. I know it's not like the usual thing, but that is something that I would like to do. Yeah. Whenever I, got, I have a chance to celebrate yeah. something, I want to give pupusas. Of course, it's not going it's... to be only pupusas. Like I want to have something else, right? But yes, pupusas are, are proper for a Salvadorian. Usted nos invita para ayudarle, teacher. Pero ah. come. <laughs> Sí, bueno, bien, sí. Nos Ahora, no, no se acepta pupusas? pedir regalos, de, solo, de, solo, solo lucky, llevarla. Ah, solo solo lucky, lucky envelopes, nada más. Solo lucky envelopes. No, esa es otra cosa. Los del grupo de, de las 9 a las 10, ellos se gozan con eso que dicen que solo lucky envelopes aceptan de ahora en adelante, porque son los, los, los sobres con dinero. O sea, que la familia oh. le va a poner ahí, o sea, que el regalo, no en sobre, sino en Lucky Envelope. <laughs> bueno, a ver, um, from the case of uh, 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 Carlos, Carlos González, for you and your family, when you have a celebration, what do you prefer to have? Do you prefer to cook at home or do you prefer to go to a restaurant? Uh, we prefer to go to a restaurant. Uh... My family loves the seafood as well as some of, uh, of, of our friends. Uh -huh. uh, uh, we went, we, we go to, to Puerto Marisco. Oh. Uh, my, my mom loved this restaurant. And so we all, all, always we decide to go to this restaurant. Great. That is nice. Yeah, it sounds like a really good option. Hopefully Jacqueline's family hears this uh, recording and they're going to take her there. <laughs> Hopefully. We're, we're going to see. All right. Very good. Very, very good. Um, in the case of Martha, what do you prefer, Martha, when you have a celebration, you and your family? Do you prefer to cook at home or do you prefer to go to a restaurant? Hello, Martha. Aren't you there? Bueno, estamos experimentando errores de, uh, de origen. Vamos ahora entonces <laughs> con Patricia. I see that you're a little bit serious tonight. So let's hear from you, Patricia. What do you prefer? Do you prefer to cook at home or do you prefer to go to a restaurant? Uh, my family and my and I, uh, we prefer to go to a restaurant because uh, it is a special a birthday or a graduation or a, okay. a good grades. Yes. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You know, it, it just just to to wind out the 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 like going to a different place from the house. 
so that it makes it uh -huh. even more special. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty, pretty accurate as well. Okay, very good. So I want to ask the ones who have said that they prefer to cook at home, what do you think about cleaning and doing the dishes after you cook? Is it convenient? Do you like that? Ah, verdad, Jacqueline, a ella no le gustó. A ella no le gustó, verdad. ¿Se acuerdan? Sí, me imagino. ¿Y sabes, teacher? A mi mamá no le gustan los, los desechables. Ah, no de podía. verdad. Ay, no. yo, entonces peor todavía. O sea, que me toca estar ahí lavando. Sí, that happens, that happens. In my case, I love cooking. Like, I love, uh, like, if I have the chance to prepare um, something in advance and like decide what I'm going to make, I love doing it uh, because I feel like it's more special. Like I can make it myself. And as my stepmother says, I can put some love into the cooking. But um, when, it, when it comes to convenience and if I have the chance and if we have the money, we prefer to go out. We prefer to go to a restaurant because then you don't have to do much. You know, the only thing you have to do is pay and enjoy because with uh cooking at home that is a proper problem i will say um it happens all the time there is tons and tons of dishes to do after you cook it is enjoyable because you have what you <clears> want <throat> um if you can cook though because if it was the case of joaquin joaquin diría no yo no porque pues pues sí verdad no me sale sí yo por suerte no sé a mí me gusta mucho cocinar o sea disfruto bastante cocinar Pero eh, tampoco es que cocino todo el tiempo. Um, pero cuando son ocasiones especiales, siento que tiene como un sabor distinto, ¿verdad? Y, o sea, gracias a eso he aprendido a hacer un montón de cosas. Así que, más que todo por mi hermana. Porque mi hermana siempre inventa. Es como que, o sea, ella me dice, hagamos tal cosa. Y yo, vaya, vos solo pones la idea. Y yo pongo el dinero y la cocina. <risa> pero igual, o sea, es, es eh, algo que, pues, al final de cuentas, ¿verdad?, Cuando ya uno lo, lo, lo prueba, tiene mucho, um, como digamos, ese, ese sentido o sentimiento especial, ¿verdad? La comida. Pero igual, uh, preferences are preferences. If you guys rather go to, uh, to go to a restaurant, I think it will be for the convenience to some extent. Um, in other hand, of course, you know, it is better because you have more um, to choose from. Like you are not limiting people to what you have prepared. Um, so yeah, going to a restaurant might be way more convenient in many, many, uh, fronts. <laughs> yes. In many fronts, but it is special when you, um, have the chance to cook right. something for a special moment, but good. all right. Uh, that is just the question that I had for tonight. We're going to be practicing. All of us are going <clears> to be speaking a little bit. Sorry for the ones that I didn't have the chance to ask, but we're going to get there. Okay. So tonight. Sure. Teacher. Yes, 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 yes. Tell me. Excuse me. me. Uh, before we continue, have mm -hmm. a blast. What do you, what do you do? Did you say that it means? Enjoy the moment. When you have an amazing moment, an amazing day, you can say, "I had a blast." For example, if it's oh. in the like in after the fact. Sí. Okay. Esa es otra otra frase. De hecho, no sé si ya la conocen o si la si la manejan. After the fact. Uh, after the path after no. the fact after the fact, ah, the fact. fact. after uh -huh. the fact ah, the fact that. the fact oh, yes. right. after the fact sabemos qué significa eso de hecho después del hecho después del hecho sí ya después digamos que terminó qué sé yo el evento el día la salida entonces ustedes pueden decir eso verdad I had a blast o sea no va a ser I have sino que uh, <laughs> por eso yo no no escribí uh, ahí cuando le escribí eso eso para o sea para que lo supieran no les escribí el I porque el I lo vamos a utilizar siempre ya en el futuro o sea after the fact como bien dije hace un momento verdad y a, vamos a utilizar entonces la versión del pasado y diremos I had a blast sí entonces ahí sería me divertí o sea me divertí mucho me la pasé súper sí I had a blast porque si yo oh. solo quiero decirle a alguien por ejemplo o sea porque ahorita Este es el momento presente y estoy deseándole a Jacqueline que mañana se la pase súper. Entonces, por eso yo dije, have a blast. Yes. Sí. Uh -huh. es, es ahora, Let's ¿verdad? See. Que estoy deseando para después el, um, ese, ese, digamos, ese, ese uh, sentimiento, sí, de que se la pase súper. Entonces. Uh -huh. And then, is it like when, when we say have fun, 
have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Have a blast is on top of that. Oh, See? yeah. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Have fun is like the, the first step. Have mm -hmm. a lot of fun uh, is like the, the second step. Have a blast will be like the top, like the maximum. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Because blast is like an explosion, right? Blast is like an explosion. Yes. Uh -huh. Blast will be like a, a synonym to, a, to an explosion. But yeah, uh, have a blast is like just enjoy it, you know, to the top. Like, yes, just drain yeah. all your energies and enjoy it to the top. Of course. So, yeah, Thank that's... you. All right. No problem. Very good. So this is the conversation I was talking about. We have to practice it. We're going to be doing it at the end of the class because I don't like cutting classes in the middle. Sometimes I do, but that is not my favorite thing to do. Um, so that is what we're going to be practicing in just a bit. So here we have two people, Carla and Andy. Those are the two main um, characters or people who are going to be taking part in this conversation. And they're going to be discussing, well, problems that are taking place around their area. So here is how it should go. Look at all those dead fish. What do you think happened? Well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can that, how can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, yeah. it is. But a lot of companies ignore it, ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of their top executives. Okay, so that's the conversation. That's how it should, uh, it should be developed. Uh, I would like to hear two of you guys who are going to help me with the first rundown of this conversation, the first practice of it. So who is willing to do the practice of this conversation right now? Me, teacher. Okay, Walter. And who is going to join Walter? Me, Me teacher. Uy. Ah. Ok, tenemos cuatro. Tenemos a Patricia, tenemos a Miguel y tenemos a Sandra. Así que vamos a tener ahorita a Patricia y a Walter. Sí, y después Miguel y Sandra. Good. Ok, ok. Good. Go ahead, Patricia. Uh, yo soy Carla. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, look at those dead fish. What do you think happened? Well, there is a factory outside town that's pumping chemical into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to, to stop them in, is to get a TV station to run an, a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of their top exec... Ex <laughs> <laughs> Sabía que vamos a llegar ahí. <laughs> executives. Yes, executives, executives. Muy bien. Ahora, eh, Sandra y Miguel, por favor. You okay. can start, Sandra. Yes, of course. <clears throat> Look at all those dead fish. What do you think happened? Well, there are a factory on side town that turning thematic into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is. But a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company man management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a history in it. Yes, 
Companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of, the, of this company? It is College Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of their top exec executives there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very, very good. Nice. Thank you very much, guys. Well, well so done. Nice. Okay. So let's see a couple of things. There are a couple of phrases here that I love to use and that are very, very important. Mm. For example, this one, by the way, yeah. by the way, it is something that um, you use by to way. introduce like a new idea. So normally, um, if you're discussing a situation and you just thought about something different, something that is not completely related to what you're talking about, it is related, but it's not this. It's not going on the same direction. Um, you can introduce this idea or this comment by using this phrase. By the way, this is similar to in Spanish saying a propósito. So that um, so normally. Por cierto. Or por cierto. Um, yes, but por cierto is normally, or we use by the way, with the meaning of por cierto at the end of the, of the sentence. So, de hecho final, sea de paso. Ajá, al final, <laughs> también, exacto. De hecho, esa sería una, una, una traducción bastante, bastante literal del yeah. by the way. Sí, mm -hmm. pero el, yeah, exactly. cuando utilizamos el by the way al final, eh, ahí sí, ¿verdad? Significa por cierto. Es como tipo, um, I enjoyed the movie, by the way. Sí, o sea, me gustó la, la película, por cierto, oh, bueno, okay. pero, pero, pero conste, la, la a la hora de traducirlo, este, by the way, se parece mucho al do, el do que significa aunque, sí, uh -huh. aunque, o sea, ustedes, por ejemplo, dicen, um, I have two friends, do, o sea, digamos, alguien les dice que ustedes son personas muy populares y así, entonces ustedes quieren decir que solamente tienen dos amigos, o aunque solo tengo, pero solo tengo dos amigos, o aunque solo tengo dos amigos, uh, utilizamos ese do al final. Entonces, a la hora de traducirlo, no lo vamos a traducir así, ¿verdad? Porque vamos a decir, tengo dos amigos, pero, o tengo dos amigos, aunque, o sea, no. A la hora de traducir en español, va a ser, aunque solo tengo dos amigos. Lo mismo cuando utilizamos el by the way al final. Sí, o sea, yo, eh, por, por ejemplo, um, y es en, el, en, la misma, en la misma línea, ¿verdad? O sea, alguien hace días me recomendó una película que quería que yo viera, entonces, y estábamos hablando acerca del partido al que vamos a ir. Let's say we're just discussing, okay, so we're, we're going to meet, oh, sorry. We're going to meet uh, for the game at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Um, and I just remembered, oh, I like the movie you recommended the other day, by the way. So it's an, a different idea. It is, of course, also related to entertainment, but it's not completely related to the game. So you introduce that idea in that way. If you do, if you do use it, um, like in the beginning, it will be uh, to introduce, as I just mentioned, a different opinion or a different idea to the one that is being discussed. And the other one is what if. What if? This is something that causes a lot of trouble. I hope it's not the case with you guys. But this causes a lot of trouble with people who are learning English. Um, the ones who don't remember the use for or what no, if. if. Yes, what if. What if. And the way in which we're going to be using this is only to um, to recommend a possibility. So yeah. It's only a possibility. It's not something that has like a lot of uh, um, like a how can we say, like we have tested this and we know for sure that it works or we know for sure that it doesn't work. What if is only for a possibility? Like I can say, um, what if I'm not good enough to be a teacher? You know, before I, I, I started teaching, I was like, what if I, what if they don't listen to me? What if they don't pay attention? So those are possibilities. Those are things that are up in the air. So what if is only a phrase that we use to introduce those possibilities um those can be can be used like with another person or these are some of the most common phrases that you can use in like internal conversations like in your brain you know a lot of the times you're questioning yourself on things that you're about to do so what if is the phrase to use what if what if i come late what if i don't have the money what if i don't have the capacity so what if 
Uh, and I think those are the only ones. I think so. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. It's like, uh, ¿qué pasaría, no? Sí, ¿qué pasaría si? Sí. ¿Qué pasaría si? Sí. Sí? ¿Qué tal si? Sí? Ajá. ¿Qué uh -huh. tal si? Sí? What if? ¿Qué tal si? Sí? ¿Qué pasaría si? Sí? Exactamente. So that's what. Marvels. De hecho, por eso es que me gusta. <risa> no quería que se dieran cuenta. Gracias, Miguel. Okay. You're welcome. Yes, what if? Estoy esperando la segunda temporada. Uh, yeah, so yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Bueno. Nice. That's yes, very yes. nice. Yeah. So, um, if we talk about words that can be complicated here, there is a couple. There's a couple parts. For example, this one, if you guys notice, even I struggled when I was reading it. Um, so, there's a factory outside town. Ahora, en este caso, a veces, nosotros que estamos aprendiendo, tenemos quizá como la inclinación a decir esto. Outside of town. So, yeah. Outside yeah. of town. Porque, pues, en español así es, ¿verdad? Afuera, uh -huh. afuera, afuera del de... pueblo. Sí, afuera del pueblo. Outside of town. Pero acá no es necesario. Solo decimos outside town. ¿Sí? Outside, outside town. town uh, that's pumping that's chemicals town. into the river. Sí, that's pumping chemicals into the river. Entonces, esa sería la parte que más o menos puede ser un poco compleja, ¿verdad? Outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. Um, now... The rest of it isn't that against the law. That will be another that is a little bit complicated to an extent. But the one that may cause some trouble is this one. The word publicity. Hate bad publicity. Okay. Publicity. Um, of course, if you are British, you're going to say publicity. But you're not publicity. British. Or you're not, you're not, yeah, you're not practicing the British version of the English language. Therefore, we're going to say companies hate bad publicity. Um, and uh, the next one is use top executives. This word is tricky, and I understand it is very tricky. Executives, um, not executives. Some people may say it like that, but the most common way to say it is executives. So I would recommend you guys to say executives. So we're executive. going to be coming, yes, executives. Executive. Yes. So the next one, oh, the other one is companies management. Companies management, because there, there are like two words just next to one another. Therefore, that makes it a little bit tricky. So talk to the company's management. Company's management. All right. Um, so those will be the things that I think are uh, important to highlight. We're coming back to this in like 10 minutes. But before we do that, I wanted to go ahead and talk about the phrases that we have seen in this conversation and the ones that are used to introduce a possible solution like about, uh, what, uh, one thing to do management. about it is to talk to the company's management so here what we're doing is only offering our opinion on what can we do to solve a problem that's what we are have been discussing during um the whole development of the classes it has been problems so uh these are three ways that we can use now the first one one thing to do about it is to offer my opinion, just my honest opinion before anyone else, before anyone has mentioned a possible solution. Now, when somebody else has already stated their own opinion, you are going to have to, to use a variation of it. And you're going to have to say something like another way another way and in this case um, we're going to have to use a different verb because it's going to be hard to to use the same verb or it's not going to work all the time so the best way to um to establish this sentence is going to be of course depending on the context depending on what problem you're trying to solve because not all the time you're going to be trying to stop uh, a, a situation probably sometimes you're going to be trying to start a situation therefore it is not of course recommended that you save this into your memory like the second uh, option is to say another way to stop no another way and then you use the infinitive clause and uh the verb has to be corresponding to the situation you're trying to solve now the first one normally uh one thing to do about it it works like all the time you know for for any situation it can work um, depending, of course, 
on the context, but it can work as the first opinion. Of course, also the phrase as we have here, phrases, it's not a specific because it can be anything. Like the phrase can relate only to the problem that you're trying to solve once again. So these questions or the, 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 the main thing here is that you remember that for the first comment, for the first opinion, you can use this um, sentence. One thing to do about it is, now for the second opinion, you're going to be, try to be trying to be respectful and say another way, or you may also introduce that it is your opinion. I think, or I, no, I consider, because consider is a little bit more um, respectful. I consider another way too, and then of course, um, you mentioned what you think. I consider another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story. See, to run a story on it, because that was like the whole thing. So I consider another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story. Now, um, in this one, esta es una complicada, sí. Aquí deben ser muy cuidadosos cuando utilicen esta, que esta es como la, la parte final, digamos. Y se ve mal, por ejemplo, si ustedes están en una reunión y en esa reunión hay personas que ya ofrecieron sus ideas, sus puntos de vista, y ustedes salen diciendo, la mejor forma de hacerlo es esta, porque esa es su opinión, ¿verdad? ¿Cuándo lo decimos así? La mejor forma. Diferente si somos inclusivos y si utilizamos un plural. Porque aquí eso es lo que está sucediendo. Sí, es ways. Y una vez más. O sea, si podemos eh, gastar un par, de, un par de segunditos más y decir, I think, aquí sí podemos decir I think, porque esto es un poquito más eh, arrogante. Por lo tanto, no necesariamente vamos a tratar de bajarle a decir I consider. Entonces, mejor I think. Sí. I think the best ways to fight HIV or AIDS are... Y en este caso ya ustedes introducen dos opciones. Sería importante, cuando necesiten en algún caso utilizar frases como estas, que utilicen alguna de las opciones que alguien más se presentó, ¿verdad? Porque no vamos a presentar solo nuestro punto de vista. Eso, claro, o sea, si ustedes son el jefe, bueno, ahí ustedes verán. Este, tampoco les voy a enseñar cómo se deben comportar. Pero, o sea, de, de forma así como más eh, sociable, debería ser así. O sea, I think the best ways to, ahí depende otra vez, ¿verdad? Dependiendo del contexto, lo que sea que ustedes estén tratando de resolver, no siempre vamos a decir fight, puede ser, por ejemplo, qué sé yo, the best way to save whales is by, or are by, sí, y ahí pues, qué sé yo, podemos decir reducing waste in the ocean and cleaning the oceans, sí, esas pueden ser dos opciones en las cuales podríamos salvar ballenas, I don't know, I'm not an expert, uh, but I think those will be a couple options we have. So um, these are the ways in which you guys are going to be introducing opinions on possible solution to problems that you can be discussing um, with, with people. So yes, uh, any questions regarding this section? Oh, teacher, we're uh, talking about the infinitives clause and phrase. And the second one, uh, used to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened if to change to stop them is getting, not to get? I don't know, change completely the meaning of the mm, phrase? Not really. No. One way to stop them. No is infinity. No, no gerund. In this case, the, the reason why is because when you use a gerund, to some extent, you reduce the importance of the sentence. This is not yeah. something that people are thinking about all the time. But yeah. in, from a grammatical stand, a standpoint or from a grammatical point of view, when you use mm -hmm. the gerund, you're reducing the importance of the sentence or the, the importance uh -huh. of the action. Uh -huh. um, okay. However, because you, you, you simplify it, and that is why grammaticians, they think that it's reducing the importance of the sentence. But uh, okay. if you use it like in a sentence, in a regular sentence, and you say this um, is getting a TV station to run a story on it, it is not going yeah. to change the meaning at all. Like that will be actually a normal way to say this. Like a lot of people. Uh, okay, okay. Do that. Yes. Okay. So for example, okay, here, one it. thing to do about it is talking to the company's management. You know, same, uh, okay. thing, same thing there. 
Uh, for example, okay. here, I think the best ways um, to fight HIV or AIDS are um, mm -hmm. doing more research and educating people. Okay. okay. How, however, you. though, however, when you use two, two options, you have to make sure that both of them are going to be in the journal form. So here, for example, uh -huh. yeah. doing more research and educating people. Sí. Uh -huh. Vamos a decir okay. uno, uno en gerundio y uno en infinitivo, sino que vamos a, o sea, a seguir el mismo patrón. Uh -huh. Ok. Aquí por lo que no se necesita otro to, es porque este to sirve para introducir a ambos verbos como uh -huh. verbos infinitivos. O sea, no va a ser necesario uh -huh. decir to do more research and to educate people. Sí, o sea, no necesariamente, porque este to cubre toda la, toda la oración o toda la frase. Entonces, okay. pero si lo empezamos con gerundio, sería más correcto o es correcto que solo utilicemos el gerundio. Ok. Ok. Thank you. So yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Okie dokie then. So this intonation, this is something that I think is very important when you are discussing uh, or when you're answering, sorry, when you're asking questions. Um, many people fail on this because a lot of, um, we're not used to doing that because in Spanish, for example, uh, we are so used to asking questions without making changes in, in our voices. For example, we can say, Vas a ir a la tienda. And that sounds like a statement. That sounds like an order. You know, mm -hmm. we don't make changes in our voices. We don't, uh, because the proper way to, of intonating that sentence will be, Vas a ir a la tienda. So that's yeah. like, a, like, a, like a falling thing at the end. Tienda, instead of saying, Vas a ir a la tienda. That's like an order. I'm telling you to go to the store instead of asking you if you're going to the store. So um, Spanish has made us so used to doing that. But in English, it is very, very important that you guys remember that at the end of a sentence, all the time, any sentence, I think you guys have already seen this before. You guys have already uh, uh, practiced some intonations with questions. And if you have paid attention, you may notice that always at the end, mostly of uh, double um, double H words or, or, or questions like this, you have a falling intonation. Um, and also, of course, when the answers are yes or no. Because if you have a um, double H, like if you want to, to know more information, the most important part is going to be at the end of the sentence. And then probably you're going to have to raise um, your tone of voice. But the most common way to ask questions is going to be by having a falling intonation when you are asking questions. So in this occasion here, it will sound something like, would you rather take broadcasting or economics? There is not a huge difference, but there is a difference. Would you rather take broadcasting or economics? So you lower a little bit of the voice when you get to economics. Now, the second one, would you rather study fashion or hospitality? Or hospitality, or whichever you guys prefer. Would you rather study fashion or hospitality? So you have a failure, like, like you're saving the, the, the last uh, couple letters of the word, like you're saving them back into your mouth. Hospitality. Sí, ya con un poquito como de pena, ¿verdad? O sea, como que ya no quiero llegar ahí, como que no quiero terminar la pregunta. So fashion or hospitality? Would you prefer to play the guitar or the violin? Would you prefer to play the guitar or the violin? So once again, like saving up the last couple of letters. Uh, and the last one. Do you prefer to study in the day or at night? Ahora, importante recordar algunas palabras nos van a ayudar con, esta, con este tipo de, de entonación. Por ejemplo, esto de decir at night nos ayuda. El violin no, porque es una palabra bastante fuerte, ¿verdad? Así que en muchos casos pueda que no se note esa diferencia que se debe hacer. O sea, alguien puede decir, yo no, no sentí mucha diferencia, teacher, en cuando dijo el guitar en violin. Pero es porque la palabra violin es una palabra bien, bien fuerte. Con esta de hospitality, creo que es como el más, este de a night en hospitality, serían como los más evidentes, eh, en los cuales se nota, ¿verdad? Que sí se hace ese, esa variación, ese cambio en la entonación. Pero eh, cuando ustedes ofrecen opciones, eso es algo bien, bien importante. ¿Y qué pasa, por ejemplo, si yo tengo más de dos opciones? Digamos que aquí yo le quiero decir, uh, would you prefer to play the guitar 
another instrument can you guys mention another instrument instrument in english saxophone okay sax the sax yes the piano the sax. or yeah. okay it's only only two porque si no vamos a poner la gran lista okay so do you prefer ah esa es otra cosa bueno no sé en, en español la verdad no sé si hay regla para eso pero en inglés um, normalmente cuando se hacen preguntas así con opciones no se debe pasar de tres opciones no. O sea, es como lo, lo más acostumbrado. Si ustedes van a ofrecer opciones en algo, lo más, lo más acostumbrado es que solamente utilicen tres opciones. La única palabra que se puede utilizar para ofrecer cuatro opciones o hasta cinco es cuando hacemos preguntas con which. Sí, o sea, which. Like, uh, si ponemos a alguien a que elija, ¿verdad? I can ask them, like, which pen do you prefer? The red one, the pink one, the blue one, the um, yellow black one, one, or the green one, or the black one, yeah. So I offer... Um, those different options but more than that they will rather just make a list you will rather just, just do something like i have plenty of you to choose from i have and then instead of asking the question you only mention sure. what you have uh-huh i have a question yes uh, when i when we going to use rather or prefer um those are very similar those yes. are very very similar in use yes, okay? you, there mm -hmm. is not really like a huge difference now uh the thing is that rather normally it is used when you have two options now it, it is way more more um like regular to use rather when you have two options prefer can be used um to ask like for somebody's preference you know but rather it's when you offer the options. So if I if I don't offer uh, an option or if we, um, the person doesn't know the options, we don't have to use rather. We uh, will use prefer because prefer mm -hmm. is only to get to know that idea. The same that happens with which and, and what. Sí, lo mismo que pasa con which y what, ¿verdad? Cuando ustedes preguntan, por ejemplo, el nombre de alguien, no dicen which is your name. O sea, sería la traducción en español, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál es tu nombre? Uh -huh. Utilizamos what is your name, porque estamos tratando de conocer esa información. No sabemos aún esa información. En cambio, en which, o sea, ustedes pueden utilizar which con el nombre de alguien si ustedes tienen batches, por decir algo, o sea, tienen la, la, los um, nombres, sí, en, en, en etiquetas. Entonces, ustedes pueden decir which one is yours, sí, o which one is your name from this. Ustedes tienen ahí digamos Miguel en Sandra entonces, o sea, si sí, están queriendo saber cuál de esos dos es el que le pertenece a la otra persona mm -hmm. pero or, porque or tienen esas I, opciones or when I don't remember very well if your name is Daniel or Dani I can use the which or no, it is no. always what sí, porque okay. si no recuerdo estoy otra vez verdad no tengo las opciones entonces ahora, oh, wow. diferente sería Uh, si yo le pregunto which one do you prefer, Danny o Daniel ahí sí, o sea estoy preguntándole cuál prefiere, verdad, Danny o Daniel ¿Cuál, cómo te gusta más que te llamen por decir así, pero si a mí se me olvidó el nombre mejor yo digo what was your name what? again sí. what was your okay. name again perdón, esa es, una, es una, una pregunta que yo hago bien rápido y siempre me han regañado en la U porque lo digo muy rápido <laughs> what was your name again what was your name Okay. Again, yes. What was your name again? Entonces, o sea, porque es que más cada rato se me olvidan los nombres de la gente, así que por eso les pregunto, what was your name again? Y me dicen, ¿qué? El nombre, les digo, ¿cómo se llama? Entonces esa, esa, esa es la, 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 la pregunta que podríamos utilizar cuando se me ha olvidado cómo alguien se llama. Si yo recuerdo más o menos así de forma vaga que le gustaba que le dijeran Dani, pero no estoy seguro, entonces yo le pregunto, ¿verdad? Um, which one do you prefer? Sí. Which one do you prefer? Or which one do you rather? Ahí también podemos utilizar rather, ya que tenemos las opciones. Which one do you rather? Pero ahora, con rather también se, 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 se causa un problema. Porque aquí vamos a tener que explicar un poquito más. Which one do you rather be called? Sí. Or be called by? Daniel or Danny? Sí. Entonces ahí, o sea, ofrezco, ¿verdad? Eso, pero rather lo hace un poquito más largo porque tengo que explicar, o sea, cuál prefieres, eh, cómo porque prefieres que, que te bien. llame. Sí, cómo prefieres que te llame. Entonces, con prefer sería más fácil, ¿verdad? Porque solo estoy preguntando por su preferencia, ¿sí? Y por eso mismo, prefer es el equivalente a what 
porque yo no tengo necesariamente la información completa, ¿sí? Y por otro lado, which es el equivalente más similar al rather, porque ahí sí estamos ofreciendo las opciones. Así que en una pregunta con opciones, ustedes pueden utilizar prefer sin ningún problema, pero en una pregunta sin opciones, no se podría utilizar rather, ¿sí? Rather sería el que no se pueda utilizar, sino que prefer. Por ejemplo, um, si yo no quiero ofrecer, ¿verdad?, a alguien las opciones, lo mismo. O sea, yo le digo a alguien, let's go to a restaurant. Y, y la persona me dice, which one? Yo le puedo preguntar, which one do you prefer? Or what do you prefer? ¿Sí? O sea, ¿qué prefieres? Entonces, no tengo las opciones. Ahora, si yo tengo opciones, si yo quiero ya más o menos tengo idea de dónde quiero ir, yo le pregunto, would you rather go to McDonald's or, um, I don't know, Pizza Hut? Sí, entonces, would you rather? Ahí estoy preguntando, ¿ya preferirías ir a McDonald's o a la Pizza Hut? Sí, o sea, porque ya estoy ofreciendo las dos opciones. Ok, entonces, eh, ¿alguna duda más que tengamos con esto? Oh, perdón, lo que les decía de la, de la, de la entonación en esto. Would you prefer to play the guitar, the sax, or the violin? Sí. En, en los dos primeros tenemos rising intonation, and then the last one, it's falling intonation. Ok, uh, ahora sí, ¿alguna duda que tengamos con estas eh, oraciones o estamos claros con esto? No. Muy bien, porque si estamos claros, entonces vamos a ir sacando lo, la, las capturas para esta conversación y en un momentito entonces vamos a estar practicando porque sí me importa que uh, hagamos esta práctica. Hace días que no tenemos eh, práctica de, de conversations. So, if you guys have your screenshots already, um, the rooms are open, you guys can start joining. Okay. How can they do that? Isn't that against the, the law? Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing uh, to do about it is uh, talking to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to go get a TV station to run a history meet. Yes, companies hate that policy. By the way, by the way, what's the name of the of this company? It is College Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of, of their top executives. Executives. <laughs> yes. Okay. Humor. Liz, pueden compartir la imagen, por favor. Okay. <laughs> In the chat? Can you see? Yes. You, you can I mean, Andy? 
Ok, ok, ok. Uh, look at all that fish. What do you think happened? Well, there's a factory upside down. Mm. Pooping chemical. Well, that there's I, a factory outside. Can... <clears throat> yeah? I am, uh, I am uh, connected in computer. I don't, uh, I can open the, the conversation in the chat. Javier, read you with Daniela. You are Andy. Have you the conversation? Who has the conversation? The, the microphone is off. Sorry, sorry. Andy, well, there is a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is. But a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's man management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what is the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle, one of their top executives. Nice. Okay. Someone else? <laughs> okay. I, yes, I can. Uh, I get in. I get, get in the chat. Um, in my 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 Okay. 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 I suppose. Okay, guys. You can see my, you can see my screen. Finished. Okay. Again, again. Okay, I'm Carla. Interchange, interchange the roles. Okay. okay, I'm Carla. I start. Look at, look at, look at, look at, ouch. Look, look at all those look at fish. All. What do you think happening? Okay, well. There is a factory outside town that's pumping chemical into the river. How can they do that? How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Isn't yes. that against the law? Yeah. Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about this? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate but publicity, by the way. What's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of their top is, 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 uh, executives. Executive. Okay. No, I am, I am Andy. Okay. Alejandro, who, will be, who will be Carla? Alejandro. Okay. Okay, begin, please. Okay, I'm going to start. Uh, look at all those dead fish. What do you think happened? Well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. 
board. What can I do about it? Okay, okay. So, um, thank you guys very much. You guys did great. I was listening to your practices. Today, I had the chance to go to all the breakout rooms because we only had three of them. Um, so, it was kind of easier. And uh, yeah, I just got to say that the word executives proved to be a test. I noticed that it was very hard for most of us when we got to the word executives to um to pronounce it properly but still there is always going to be a word like that so no problem at all um and for now i think that is it guys thank you very much for your time thank you very much for your attention and participation in today's class i hope tomorrow is a very good day i hope jacqueline has an amazing birthday tomorrow and yes. uh <laughs> you're very welcome and happy uh, birthday jacqueline Thank yes, you. Happy birthday from yeah. now. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday. birthday. in advance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hi, so. See you. Yes, very, very good, guys. <laughs> yeah, see you tomorrow. Yeah, no, bye bye. <laughs> no, okay. Sí, ya se cerró la clase el día de hoy. Okay. Bye-bye, <laughs> 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 people. Have a good one.